Hi, my name is Peter Chin Hong, and I'm an infectious disease doctor at UCSF. In this module, we will be talking about medically important protozoa with a focus on tissue infections caused by protozoa. These are some of my favorite protozoa in all of infectious diseases. By the end of this module, this is what I hope you will accomplish. First, you should know that T. cruzi is transmitted by the reduvid bug in Central and South America and causes Chagas disease. You should recognize that Leishmania species are transmitted by the bite of the sand fly and can cause varied cl clinical manifestations from cutaneous to visceral. Finally, you should be able to interpret the diagnostic tests used for protozoal tissue infections. In the big map of major human pathogens, we are literally here. And zooming in, we will focus in on two main pathogens within the protozoa section, Trypanosoma cruzi and Leishmania. Toxoplasma will be covered in the CNS protozoal section. Let's start with Trypanosoma. There are two main species of Trypanosoma that are medically important. There's T. cruzi and there's T. brucei. T. brucei is mainly a pathogen that causes CNS disease and will be discussed in the CNS protozoal section as well. We will focus on T. cruzi in this section. T. cruzi causes Chagas disease, also known as American trypanosomiasis. This disease occurs primarily in rural, central, and South America. We need to know about this disease in the US and in the rest of the world because of immigration patterns. I myself have seen several cases in the last few years in my own practice. There are many advanced heart disease patients, for example, who have chronic Chagas disease, who are candidates for transplantation. You get infected with T. cruzi after a bite from an infected reduvid or kissing bug. This bug lives in the walls of rural huts and feeds at night. This bug likes to bite at the mouth or the eyes, hence the name kissing bug. There are other modes of transmission, and this includes vertical transmission, ingestion of the parasite, blood transfusions, and organ transplantation. Clinically, there is an acute and a chronic phase of disease. Acutely, patients may present, like the boy in the image, with facial edema and a nodule or shagoma near the bite. This patient has unilateral palpebral swelling on the right side of his face, which is a very characteristic sign of Chagas disease in the acute setting and this is called Romana's sign. Most patients remain asymptomatic, but some may progress to chronic disease, noted for cardiac and GI manifestations. The cardiac disease may be seen as myocarditis, and most patients may die from cardiac arrhythmias and heart failure. The GI manifestations are mainly in the form of megacolon, Laboratory diagnosis centers around the direct identification of organisms via a thick and thin smear, as well as serology. In the blood smear, you may see characteristic parasitic forms that are flagellated. However, this diagnostic test is fairly insensitive, and we usually send our samples to an outside lab or to the Centers for Disease Control for serologic testing. Serology may be done both in the, from the blood sample or from tissue biopsy. Treatment of diseases via the antiparasitics nifridimox or benzonidazole. Prevention with insect control and improved hygiene and infrastructure is very critical for stemming this disease in the Americas. We will next turn our attention to Leishmania. There are several species of Leishmania. Three common species that we typically deal with are Leishmania 
Dhanu Vanai, which causes old world Ishvaniasis and more visceral disease, versus Leishmania Mexicana and Leishmania Brasiliensis, which causes mainly cutaneous and mucocutaneous disease and are primarily seen in the Americas. Transmission is via the bite of a sandfly. There are two main variants of clinical manifestations caused by leishmania. On one pole, there is cutaneous leishmaniasis. This is primarily caused by the species leishmania mexicana or leishmania brasiliensis, and is primarily seen in the Americas. Disease is restricted mainly to the skin and soft tissues, as well as to the mucous membranes and cartilage. A typical presentation that I've seen multiple times in clinic is a returning traveler who presents with a painless skin lesion that eventually ulcerates and doesn't get better with typical antibiotics. Patients with visceral leishmaniasis are sicker. Visceral leishmaniasis is also known as Kala Azar, which is a Hindu word for black fever. Visceral leishmaniasis is also known as Kala Azar, which is a Hindu word for black sickness. This is because hyperpigmentation of the skin is typically seen in light-skinned patients with visceral leishmaniasis. Patients may present with intermittent fever, weakness, and weight loss. There may be massive enlargement of the spleen. In visceral leishmaniasis, the organs of the reticular endothelial system, such as the liver, spleen, and bone marrow, are the most severely affected. Because of this, patients may present with anemia, leukopenia, and thrombocytopenia. Again, this infection is very notable for a striking enlargement of the spleen due to proliferating macrophages and sequestered blood cells. Diagnosis of leishmaniasis hinges on direct identification of organisms. One may visualize the amastigotes directly, and these are the non-flagellated forms uh, in the macrophages. This image shows an amastigote in the cytoplasm of a bone marrow cell. We may also see uh, organisms directly in the bone marrow and in the lymph nodes. Treatment is challenging, but one can use sodium stiboglucanate or pentavalent antimony or liposomal amphotericin.